So I saw somebody wrote a comment on uh, my video uh, on the book of Ephesians chapter 4. And this is the comment. It said, Hi, Paul. Thank you for these chapter studies. I hope you will do Psalms someday. Yeah, Psalms would be a great study to do, except that, you know, it would be something, if I undertook it, it would probably last me the rest of my lifetime. But anyways, maybe from some chapters of Psalms, I will definitely get to one of these days. So thank you for your encouragement and exhortation. And then this person, you know, goes on to ask a question. I was wondering who are the hidden ones in Psalm 83. So let's just go ahead and read uh, Psalm 83 and uh, see what uh, we may understand from uh, this, uh, this uh, term, the hidden ones. In verse 1 it says, Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. So this was the question is, what is meant by the hidden ones? Okay. So in this year, first of all, before we read the rest of this psalm, let's just quickly take a look at this meaning in the original Hebrew. In this Hebrew, this, uh, this, these two words, the phrase the hidden ones, or the little term hidden ones, it is H6845, it is the word sapan, and this is the meaning. A word meaning to hide, to keep secret. It is used of concealing something often of great value. Example, the baby Moses, and then like in another example is Rahab concealed the Israelite spies. It is used figuratively. This is the meaning that you know, we want to get to here. It is used figuratively of keeping something hidden in a person's heart or mind. It is used of God protecting a person. It refers to something hidden, stored up. As a noun, as a noun. This is the meaning, okay? Here we go. This is what is the real meaning of the word hidden ones. As a noun. That means it's referring to some people. It means God's treasured people. Okay. Brown driver begs, you know, his dictionary says to hide, to treasure, to treasure or store up. So essentially, this is how we read Psalm 83.3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. So he is talking about the people of Israel and consulted against thy treasured ones. Who was God's treasure? It was Israel. How do we know that this whole psalm is about people? It's about some men and women that are here on the earth, not about some kind of secret, you know, angels or some spirit beings or something from a different world or from heaven. How do we know that? Because here is said right there, right? In verse 3, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people. So where were God's people? They were on earth on the nation of Israel and consulted against thy treasured ones, the hidden ones, which are those whom God values and treasures and protects, keeps them hidden in the shadow of his wings, as we read in Psalm 91 and many other places, you know, in Isaiah, that, you know, that Jesus himself gave us that example in, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered you as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings to basically to protect her. So that is the meaning here. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Where was God's nation? Here on earth. So it is referring to people on the earth. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. See, direct reference explains it quite clearly that he is speaking about the people of Israel. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. You know, the psalmist is reminding God that he, that God, you know, Israel is your treasured people. They are the people that you value, that you protect, that you guard, that you keep. So he is remembering, he is reminding God that, you know, they are, when he says they are confederate against thee, it, what he's saying is these people that are our enemies, they are the enemies of the nation of Israel, they are set up they are your enemies they are actually have turned against thee and who are the enemies the tabernacles of edom which was again an enemy of israel the ishmaelites moab hagarines gebel ammon 
Amalek, Philistines, inhabitants of Tyre. Asur also is joined with them. They have help and hope and the children of Lot, Selah. Okay, so again, all these nations and peoples that are listed here, they were all the enemies of Israel right around them. So here, so what he's saying is, God, all these enemies are all around us, but we are your treasure, we are your, your children, you have promised to protect us, so keep us hidden in the shadow of thy wings and protect us from these enemies. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin, as the brook of Kaizen, which perished at Endor, they became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb, yea, all their princes as Zeba and as Zalmuna, who said, Let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. So where were these houses of God? They are the houses of the people of God in the nation of Israel in the Middle East. That's where they were. And they were crying out to God that all these enemies are all around them. And, you know, God, they're reminding them, God, we are your houses. We are your people. We are your treasure. So, you know, please protect us and keep us hidden. And in verse 13, oh, my God, make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind as the fire burns the wood, and as the flame sets the mountains on fire. So persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever, yet let them be put to shame and perish. So this had no reference in this whole psalm to any kind of spirit or angel or the watchers or any such thing. It is quite plainly referring to people that live here on the earth, people of Israel who are God's people, his treasured ones, his hidden ones, and then, of course, all the enemies of Israel, which were all around them, which are named here extensively in the psalm. But look at this final verse here in verse 18. It says that men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah, the Most High over all the earth. So this is, again, telling us that this teaching is about men, and that all over the Didu are the most high over all the earth. That this is referring to men that live on the earth. That men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah art the most high over all the earth. So this psalm is about people and about men that dwell on the earth. It's nothing to do with any heavenly creatures or with angels or any other spirit beings. That is the meaning of 83.3, you know, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people, people, flesh and blood people that were right here on the earth, and consulted against the hidden ones, thy treasured people, thy children, thy sons and daughters, thy priests, and thy, you know, thy servants that dwell right here on the earth. Okay, so that's the that's how I read it here, that this were this uh, reference to the hidden ones. It is not necessarily anything to do with any kind of spirit beings. It is only to do with the physical flesh and blood children of God, the children of Israel that were here on the earth at that time.